Good evening and welcome to the latest episode of the Eve Prosper Market Show. I'm your host, Lock Fox, and I'm here with all of the market news that you need going into the weekend. We're going to talk about Plex. We're going to talk about uh, the new mining platforms. We're going to talk about CSM, and we are going to hopefully make you guys a truckload of money. So without further ado, let's get started where we usually do. Quick show news. So I want to thank everyone who is tuned in live. We have a decent turnout tonight watching on both Twitch and YouTube. You can tune in too at 0300 Eve time. That's Thursday night, US, 8 o'clock Pacific. Uh, You guys should should tune in live if you can. Uh, If you can't, that is perfectly fine. We do... We do try to get the show up as fast as possible onto YouTube. Thanks to our gracious editor, Christopher Mellon. You should throw him a uh, a thank you in the chat or in the comments or on Twitter at CGEM, C-Gem Eve. Um, also, you should go check out his new show. He's doing Minor Metrics, a uh, daily look into the mineral markets. And it is... Uh, quite good it's a really quick blurb he does an amazing job keeps up the clip and is looking for new subscribers so links should be down in the youtube link below um i'll get that shared around to everybody if you want to go follow um but uh, he's doing a great job and we totally support his work there um let's see moving on the if you want to follow follow this show all you got to remember is Eve Prosper. That'll get you to Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and our blog. Uh, we should have a blog out hopefully this weekend um, looking to release some new endpoints for you guys. We are going to try and make uh, high-grade forecasting a new feature in the Eve market metas. So do keep your eyes peeled. Uh, looking to get that released. And there's a whole there's a whole dev fleet thing going on that I want to go share. So... Uh, Do follow us there. If you get value out of this show, if you enjoy what we do, what we bring, and just how much try hard we bring to the uh, fake economics of space economies, um, do consider supporting us. Our patrons do keep us on the air. This show is ad free every week. We're on episode 90 this week, and it's thanks to our patrons that we can keep our servers running, keep our licenses paid, uh, keep our editor editing, and it's all thanks to the patrons. So I got to thank them. If you can give us a dollar, uh, even a dollar goes a very long way. If you want to buy me a beer, that is the very best way to do so. Um, if you can't support us directly, that is completely fine. I totally understand, but do get subscribed. Do share us with your friends. I do like seeing the numbers go up and to the right. And oh my God, I think as of right this second, we may be at 3000 subscribers on YouTube, which is something I didn't, a a bar I didn't think we'd actually hit. So thank you everybody who subscribes. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter as well, because I try to get some extra graphs over there. Um, And then the best way to get in touch with me is through our Discord. Uh, Links to join should be down in the doobly-doo below. Uh, Come join us. We've got a community going on there. Uh, We are are collected quite a few people over there. That's the very best place to get in touch with me and get the very latest in dev fleet stuff and graphs and market market thoughts and uh, get your questions answered. That's the best place to do it. Uh, last, before we go and in, get into the real news, um, I want to thank Legacy of Capsuleer. Uh, we were okay. on their podcast this last weekend uh, with uh, Rick Javix and Steve Renukin uh, talking about meta stuff and market stuff and and some of the latest changes with Plex. Also, I was on Open Comms with Dirk McGurk and crew uh, over on INN talking the Plex split. That was last Friday, if you guys want to go check that out. Um, also, you should put on your to do uh, both Open Comms at, I want to say, I want to say at 0200 tomorrow and um, talking in stations, which should be either 15 or 1600 on Saturday, um, are both 
having CCP devs in their shows, and you should go tune into them. Uh, Open Comms will have CCP Rise, I believe, and I know for a fact that Matterall has landed uh, CCP Fozzy to talk about the latest uh, platform drilling stuff. So uh, do get tuned in. Do 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 catch that because uh, it should be quite a good show. And I know uh, I'm a particular fan. Uh, I'm a little sad. I missed a chance to be on Matterall's show last week, but uh, he, he had a, he had a full docket and it was a great show. So with that, now that I've wasted enough of your, your opening time, let's go ahead and get straight into the show. Uh, once again, I got to remind everyone that this is the last week to vote for your CSM. Uh, the, Voting closes on the 27th, so this is your last chance. If you have been putting it off, wait no longer. Pause the show. We will come back. It's perfectly fine. Uh, do get voting, though, because voting is important. The CSM uh, is a conduit for the players to get views to the devs uh, through a better conduit. Um, and especially if you are feeling like the latest round of changes is all null all the time, uh, maybe you should make sure that you put in a vote for people who are not null. So um, this would be a great chance to remind you who we support here at Prosper. Uh, first is, if you'd vote for me, you should vote for Rodin. Uh, he is our economic candidate. He was writing for Neocom and uh, doing a lot of economic work. Uh, we support his his run as our as as my surrogate in this case. I cannot run. I I just do not have the time. And Roden is a much better much better candidate than I am. Uh, number two in our slot is Commander A's. If you are a generalist, if you're looking for somebody who's a little outside the circles to uh, to cover a few more bases, Commander A's is our choice. Um, he he. Uh, if you are a high sec generalist, he is the kind of guy that uh, that that we have on our list for this year. And then last but certainly not least is Arika Mizune, who, if you are uh, at all interested in accessibility topics, uh, she's your candidate, and also she is a stunning in industry expert. So uh, we support all three of these candidates, and I know. Fuzzy Steve, uh, Steve Renukin is missing off this list. We do still support him, but um, I didn't get a chance to redo the slides. So uh, do vote for Steve because, I, again, he is our API candidate, and it's hard to get coverage from anyone else on that on that uh, front. So I cannot badmouth Steve uh, anymore. I, I already said my said my piece weeks ago, and we will move forward from there. With that, the part which all of those YouTube scrubbers are looking for, Plex, um, we will get to, in the second half of the show, we will talk about the drilling platforms in in uh, greater detail, um, but this flow is going to work out a lot better for us here, uh, just, to, just to make life a little bit easier. Um, so let's start with Plex. Um, I'm eating quite a bit of crow on this one as we crawl over the 1.5, 1.15 billion mark. Um, we were hot into, into the split news and we're hot again going into this weekend. Um, this is little, uh, I find this rather interesting I have been saying for the last three months that it should go the opposite direction, um, and especially since we should expect a decent amount of shedding once the once the Plex split happens and all of that RM becomes liquidated onto the market. Um, the the uh, I think this is a short term thing. Also, I'd be uh, I think this may be hype into Fan Fest, and depending on what the schedules look like. After FanFest, after we see the roadmap and the release schedule, I'm, I'm hoping that we that we turn it back. So make hay while the sun shines, of course. That is uh, one of our mottos. But uh, I'm finding this rather weird to, to be this high. Um, again, if we zoom all the way out, we were in this, uh, in this stability uh, regime and have broken out of that quite spectacularly. Um, I don't like seeing this high this fast, but uh, once we get to the zoom in, I'll, I'll kind of explain what I think is going on at the moment. So uh, 
we are on target to hit one one point two in the next ten days. Uh, I wouldn't bank on it because I think that we're in really unstable weak territory getting there. But like, uh, I got to tell you guys the best the best information I have, and like this breakout is is extremely hot. It has it has uh, triggered our our regular analysis, which. Um, I don't like, I get really antsy when, when Plex triggers, triggers the other tools in our toolkit, uh, because usually Plex is very well behaved and this is, this is too hot, too fast in my opinion. Zooming all the way in, we can still see that we're a little bit short in volume. Um, what we saw ahead, uh, last week and which I kind of miscalled was that we saw this shortage right before the uh, Plex graph, the, the Plex split was announced. Um, and in the meantime, between when I broadcast and Monday, I um, was talking with Rivra and she pointed out that uh, this, this uh, dumping correlated better with the liquidation of Rorkel alts, where, where people are like, well, Rorkel mining's over, fuck it, and they just burn their brains out. And um, with that with that pattern in mind, I think that's a much better explanation than, than the uh, people with their tinfoil castles talking about leaks, because, like, the scale of this leak means that somebody would have to have leaked the information while the dev blog was in the publishing queue, which means that it had to have come from, like, the community team, like there, there's only like five or ten devs who could possibly do the thing, and uh, all of those guys should be like veterans of CCP who know better than to to make a quick buck on uh, on on leaking some T20 bullshit. So, um, GG Reddit, but uh, we're seeing a similar pattern here again. And if we zo we we go. I'm probably going to have to fix this graph because, oh my god, uh, resculpt certificates. Why? <laughs> um, markets are looking the way they should. Um, we're seeing, let's do this a little out of order, uh, we're still seeing a lot of supply in the injector market, though that's quickly getting absorbed out of out of the market. So, Let's wait through the weekend before we make any brash decisions. There could still be Rorkel's uh, um, liquidating brains in the in the interim between here and FanFest, um, which which again, like I said, the supplies are pretty short. Um, we'll see where this number goes on the sell volume. Um, if we creep back up to the 2k supply, uh, I expect prices, I, I expect there to be more upward pressure on Plex, but if we stay under the 1k line, uh, I think that this pressure will have, uh, subsided and we can expect that people are just stockpiling, which I still think is a terrible idea ahead of the split. Uh, again, what's going to happen on split day is that your Plex turns from one Plex into 500 Plex, right? And the other thing that happens is all the other Yahoos who have all of this spare Aram in their brains, who have up to, what, 5,500 uh, pieces of Aram in their, in their uh, things absolutely for free, um, are going to come out to the market with, you know, a thousand something. Let's see. They're, they're going to come out with nearly nearly a thousand, somewhere in the 850 Plex range. There's going to be thousands of these people coming to market and they're going to, they're going to be either selling for a quick buck because the prices are high or they're going to be holding this for, for, uh, wealth storage and not need and, and use it internally without actually going to the market for demand. So you get, you get a double shot of half the people are going to, are going to sell it right off and crash the market. And the other half are going to stay home and not use any, killing the demand side of the market. So I think we're in for a, a precipitous fall once this hits. And my hope is that we see this hopefully in the May release. Like if I were Rise, that's where I'd be aim aiming for. 
Um, I'm not Rise. I don't know what's going on internally. Uh, I would I would hope that we get it released right before the major the major release uh, in June. But again, no FanFest news makes this really hard to really put a time scale on everything. Um, before we move on, just a quick recap of the skill trading margins. Uh, again, now what we were seeing was a constriction in price and a increase in costs dunking the margins. Um, and now we just see the increased cost uh, hurting the margins here. So this was a bit of a double whammy coming into 119.3. Um, and now we're just sort of in a, well, Plex is expensive, so deal with it kind of regime if you are a, a skill point farmer. Uh, margins are pretty thin, but again, still positive. So life is good no matter what. Uh, I'd be holding for a higher price, of course, uh, waiting for this to rebound uh, against the Plex cost. Because again, the supplies are just really hot right now with uh, everyone getting out of out of Oracles. Let's, uh, let's talk about mar market indexes. Um, Things are still looking pretty healthy. Um, even with the Roracle nerf, we're still seeing very high uh, net trade values coming through the, the mineral market. So even with prices rising, we're still seeing uh, the same amount of volume moving around. Um, also, with all of the extra trade and pressure in the upward price of Plex, we're still not seeing that that well reflected in the net trade value. So we're seeing more of a shell game where there's no there's no great influx of Plex. There's no great uh, retraction of demand. It's just that the price and the demand are moving together uh, to negate each other, unfortunately. So um, the the this is actually pretty interesting given just how much we've risen in the last in the last week we've seen like a 10 percent move in the uh in the plex markets but we're not seeing that 10 percent reflected here in the net trade values um also i'm still pretty annoyed with how low the ship trade is going and i would really like to see more ships moving around um like this is this is starting to this is starting to get into creep territory for me personally, where uh, I was hoping that more more content would be would be moving. Like this, this is this is a weakness in the PvP market that I do not like seeing. All right, so uh, moving into those PvP numbers again, you can see what I mean. That uh, so this bump up here was Bernjita. And we're back down to the trillion destroyed per day. And that is that is uh, lower than we'd expect. We, we've been seeing 1.1 trillion, 1 1.2, and, and on good weekends, you know, 1, 2, 5, 1, 3. And, like, we just see a really general holding pattern across the board. We see the number of kills dropping down under the... Uh, 15,000 per day mark, which is, again, disheartening. Um, we're really seeing a contraction in activity uh, given how, how active things should be. Uh, it's usually a better season. So, I mean, you look back a year, uh, we were in the middle of, we were just about to start World War B here. And uh, we're with, if we factor in this bump into the Ascension Age, um, we should be up near the closer to the 20k mark than we are than the 10k mark in my opinion so get killing people guys stop stop staying docked kill some shit uh make some content the uh the gears of war are what uh what turn the market so yeah make it make it so moving on to minerals um Tritanium ha was up last week, and it's uh, corrected down this week uh, to about a 4.2, 4.4 mark. Uh, looks like a buy. Uh, again, if you guys want real good zoom in day to day, you should be checking out Chris Mellon's Minor Metrics Show. Link should be down in the YouTube link down below. Um, the 
Markets here are a little bit weird. Uh, we should be seeing supplies stay flat. Uh, if the if the if the Rourke nerf was was as awful as everyone was lamenting it to be, we should be expecting that uh, the growth we were seeing in supply should have leveled off and stayed even. Like I was really expecting supplies to stay even at the 30, 32 billion mark. Um, and yet we see it climb to 40 billion, which means we have a lot of downward pressure on prices right now, which means if you're holding TRIT, I'd be getting the heck out of it because we are in range to get back down to 4.0. I don't, I, I think it's a little hard to get there from right here this second, but the, the prices here, the, the supply that we're seeing, if this doesn't turn around and start to abate, um, if we don't start seeing this, this may be a sell-off of, of oversupply going on for the last week, uh, is the other possible possibility. But the, the prices are in for a downturn if you're sitting on Tritanium. Next, looking at Pyrite, things are staying steady, just under 6.0, heading to 5.5. Uh, again, similar story, just not as bad. Uh, we're still seeing hotter supply than I would have expected. Um, again, I expected to stay closer to the 5 billion line than the 7.5 billion line here on the supply side. And I think prices are going to drift into a 5.5, maybe a little bit lower. Um, it's somewhat tempting or possible to try and get uh, a, a good buy order in sub 5.5, five, but I just don't think there is the margin here to really be playing the taxes, unfortunately, um, because the goal I have whenever I suggest something to you guys is 10%, and that means if you get a 5.5 five order, you're aiming for just over 6.0, and I don't think we can get there uh, unless we see a lot more destruction start to grind through this extra supply. Next, Mexilon, a uh, particular darling of the show, had peaked uh, at 85 last week and is tracking back down to 80. Zooming in, we still see a huge uptick in supply. Um, this looks more like a burn-off than extra miners because uh, we should expect that most Mexilon is coming from high sec. It's really the bottleneck in super production. And the, the expectation of a whole bunch of new alpha miners, let's say, or high sec miners in general, we should expect that their supply growth should be very slow. Uh, that, that, the, that this trickle of new miners should be, uh, almost <laughs> infinitesimal, I guess would be the best word. Um, and we've seen a tripling in supply over the last week, which means that we're in for a drop. So if you're watching right now, I would put a buy order sub 70. I'd put something in a 65 if you're feeling really adventurous, 70 if you're not. Uh, look to try and pick up some of the sell-off because it, it looks like we're going to blast right through a floor here and we may not get all the way down to 70. You may not be able to get uh, to be able to pick it up and and feel like you've won. But if you buy sub 70, I'm pretty sure you can get a 80 plus uh, once the once we get to the summer release. That's sort of my expectation here. It's a bit of a gamble, of course. Don't trade what you're not willing to lose. But I think that this is a particularly good opportunity where we've seen an increase from 50, uh, something in a 50% increase of supply and prices staying steady means that this hammer, I think, is about to fall. Next, moving on to Isogen, staying steady between 50 and 55. Again, longtime fans of the show will know that I hate Isogen because I'm really bad at, uh, I'm really bad at uh, catching it. So the... Looking at the markets, we're still seeing that same trend of upward supply, even with all of the Rorkles that should be liqu liquidated brains. Um, I expect us to be under 50, but I don't expect an opportunity to make a bunch of money. So, I mean, gamble against me if you wish. You you might be able to make money because of these, these spikes here. But 
especially with how weak production numbers have been, uh, I wouldn't want to buy Isogen. Next, Noxium is on a tear. I would not have expected this looking at last week. I expected us to get up to 360, back down to 340, just one of these, one of these little bumps like we see here. Uh, but we are on a growth path. So before we go into the zoom in, I do want to note that we are above the RSI line here, which means that we are climbing hot and fast, which means this is dangerous territory in line for a reset uh, is the is the lesson here. If you're holding on to it, now is the chance to sell. But zooming in, we see a constriction in supply as less miners are mining, but now a huge sell off because, well, again, we've added what 20% to to the price of the thing so we're seeing our uh we're seeing stockpiles get burned to bring the price down and we've already seen the buy floor fall back down to 325 and i would expect to be sub 350 by tomorrow and close to 325 by the end of the weekend if uh, this doesn't turn around again it's in a weird spot that i don't know when it's gonna break uh we could go all the way up to 300 million units or we could break at 200 it's hard to uh Hard to, hard to read this particular graph. Next, Zydrine looking real flat, uh, sticking at 1,000. Things are looking steady. Volume a little bit lean. Uh, zooming in, we see the supply tracking up again, and uh, we've crashed through a buy floor just before the show. So um, looks like this is uh, this is a chance to to get a get an opportunistic buy order um if you believe that the rourke nerf is really going to make people stop mining uh buying a 900 million zydrine would be a decent bet because what you should expect to see is this is some sell-off if this is your story then this is a sell-off we'll be back under the 200 million line and we'll be tracking back down to 100 million and that means that a 1.1k return on Zydrine is possible. I think it's unlikely, but I also have a history of hating Zydrine. So uh, let me go ahead and put that out there that I think there's a decent play here with as wide as the buy spread has gone, uh, especially if you're watching this live right now, uh, putting in a buy order at 900k, 910k, uh, sorry, 900 or 910, uh, no Ks. Um, gives you a chance to to slurp up some of this cheap stuff and then once the market recovers once we get through this this bump uh sell off also it gives you enough room that if i'm completely wrong you buy in at nine you sell at nine uh you buy in at 900 you sell at 950 and you still don't lose money on the taxes so that's that's at least the play i have in my head Next, Megasite was down at 1350, is trending up to 1450, uh, looking strong across the board. Um, but again, similar story as Zydrine. We see a big glut of supply coming to market and a crash through the buy floor. Um, this is even hard to read from, from where I'm sitting. And we could be like, I, I, I might put some opportunistic buy orders sub 1.1K, uh, to see how far we fall on this one. Again, similar story to Zydrine. This might just be a stock burn and we'll be back down under 100 million. Price comes back to 1415 and you make your, what is that, 20% uh, on, on this particular buy order. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's risky. I don't think you'll lose money uh, playing this buy order if you can get anything filled in it. Um, I think it's a good play for the weekend, but I'd be keeping a really close eye to make sure that the price doesn't crash through your tax floor uh, so that you don't lose money on the taxes and fees trying to get get out of the position. And then last, dar uh, last darling of the show is Morphite, which is extremely weak, heading to uh, 9,500 a unit. Uh, looks like a buy. We see a big, similar story, uh, big buyout, supply, supply uh, glut. And again, this one's, this one's getting harder and harder to say buy sub 10 K, uh, because this really, to get the, to get out of this position, you need to, um, you need to go, we need war to happen. <laughs> we need the people to start fighting each other and see a lot more tech two get consumed. And 
it I'm hopeful with the with the mining chain with the with the moon mining changes that have been proposed that we see the tech two supply chain picture get more interesting, uh, get more dynamic, but that doesn't change the Morphite picture. Morphite's only going to go, only going to get consumed more if more Tech Two gets destroyed. Tech Two getting destroyed means that it needs to be consumed high in the meta. It really requires a lot of players flying Tech Two and dying Tech Two, and there's just not not that many uses for it because outside of Savor, uh, what do you? The, the the markets were willing to produce a lot more than uh, the supply is willing than the demand is really there for. So, um, if you can get one of these cheapo buy orders, I mean, do it. Throw some stock in for the rainy fund. But without without any war drums beating, this is really hard to jump on, in my opinion, uh, in the longer term, because I don't know when anybody's going to get paid for all of this work. Moving on to fuel, and this is going to be our first look into uh, my speculation for the moon mining. Um, so moon mining change comes out, and they announce these new drilling platforms. They sound great. I'm a really big fan. Uh, I think they are they are an interesting concept, and uh, I, I love this idea of uh, the moon fracking coming off the system, coming off the uh, off the moon being broken into a belt that needs to be consumed. I love this mechanic. I think it's great to have a passive element and a semi-active element uh, paired together. Um, and so the first thing that comes to my mind now is what's going to happen to isotopes. So zooming in on the, on the dev blog, uh, they talked about, and it was like one sentence, they talk about uh, since reactions are being changed, uh, we're, we're looking at, uh, instead of uh, POS arrays, we're going to add a new industry queue, is what I was reading from the dev blog, that just like you have the production skill and the research skill, we're going to have a refining skill uh, or a reaction skill, something in that, that sort of vein. And to make up for the fact that we're, we're deprecating POSs and all of that reaction hardware, uh, we should expect that isotopes be in the in the recipes for the refinement of these new moon materials. Great, right? Okay, we're all on the same page about that, right? So, this means, in my book, that Caldari Ice has to take a dive. Has to just go into the floor because now all of this, all of this reaction hardware is going to run fallow. Uh, it, it's going to run until until the day the, the, the system launches, which, again, I'm expecting June, because if it doesn't release in June, then we have to wait the entire summer until November or, or October for this release to come out. Um, and then, so what I expect to see is a convergence. The, and this is the thing I said to our Discord yesterday, once I saw the news, was that I expect uh, isotopes to converge on a price around 800. Uh, this could be 750, it could be a little bit higher. But what I expect to see is Caldari ice taking a dive. The Galente ice already is on a tear. Uh, I hope some of you guys bought in. Uh, Amar and Minmatar are not dragging up yet, which is a little concerning, uh, especially since hydrogen has lost even more space, which makes me sad. But, like, in my mind, I have a target of 800. Now, now that I've said this on the, on the show, uh, of course, <laughs> we're, we're going to balance out the fact that, is this actually going to happen because it was going to happen? Or am I pulling a uh, Jim Cramer and using my cult of personality to get the way I want? I'm hoping not the second one. I try really, really hard not to do the second one. Um, but I do expect I do expect the prices of isotopes to rise and the prices of fuel blocks to fall. Uh, looking at fuel blocks, we can already see a little bit of that happening here in the nitrogen fuel block. Uh, we see an overcorrection from the oxygen fuel block showing a great margin for once. Oh my god, so nice to see some margin there. Um, Oh, okay. Um, and 
then uh, we see the price is starting to track down. Now, what we should expect is that since Citadels use rainbow fuel, they use any color of fuel essentially, that who would fuel their who would fuel their citadel with anything but the cheapest blocks? Um, and cheapest may not be always Mimitar or Amar. Uh, cheapest may be local. So just keep that in mind. Um, but all of these reaction passes across all of Eve are going to get shut down the second this this uh, change hits. There's going to be no crossover, as far as I can tell, that we go from one mechanic to the next mechanic uh, overnight. Uh, much like the Krius change. And that means that all of those towers are basically going to go dead <laughs> right away. And so um, if I were if I were a a reactor, um, one I would be I would you know keep reacting, keep making money while the sun shines. like don't don't tear it down yet. Um, your two choices are tear it down now and hope that you get paid back for dumping the sticks or keep producing and hope that you don't get screwed when they do the buyback. And I think there's better money in running out, running out until the, uh, until the system ends and just taking whatever buyout they give you. And I think that's a better choice given the circumstances. Cause I think otherwise there's going to be panic selling and, it's going to be a big hot potato race and I, I can't imagine CCP paying better than like lowest price in 60 days kind of prices. Um, there, we don't have a lot of uh, precedent for what the prices should be, what the prices are, but we'll see what happens when we get more news. I expect a lot more about this once we get to FanFest in a couple of weeks. Um, I think they've been coyly just filling the, the news pipe ahead of FanFest, and then they will execute so that there's more to talk about during FanFest. Uh, again, zooming in on nitrogen fuel blocks, this is exactly the pattern I was worried about. We see supplies ticking up 2 million units uh, over the last couple of days. Um, I think we can be at eight, 8 million units by the end of the weekend. I think that's going to drop the price here. I know you can't see the price because it's washed out thanks to this whole burn Gita mess, but the uh, I think that we are in for a precipitous fall in nitrogen uh, to, to get back in line with the new reality, which is good news for anybody who's reacting. It means you guys can uh, save a few bucks on your uh, on your bills before uh, time runs out. Uh, next, looking across the board at Strontium, we see supplies starting to starting to wane. Um, I think this is, again, thanks to the Rourke change that we're seeing less ice get mined uh, just because of the number of miners out there. Um, nothing really to see here. I don't think that we're heading for war yet, unfortunately. Um, and if we look at heavy water, we we had peaked in supply, but uh, that is starting to turn back. So if you were looking to buy in, now's a decent time to buy in. Again, my my uh, my scales are a little blown out at the moment, but uh, as this as this supply starts to fall, I expect the price to rise back to the uh, seven hundred mark, hopefully uh, going forward, and we'll see what happens with more mining changes more of this moon mining changes uh should be opportunities to to there have been there there have been i didn't get a chance to get them into the show um there have been rumors about uh the rock the Rorkle role in the uh in the new moon mining so um this is an opportunity it's again it's a gamble i don't i think this is a case where i don't think you'll lose money but you may not make money sort of thing um and again since i don't have the scales i can't tell you what buy order to buy in but uh this might might be a decent opportunity come the weekend uh moving on to outliers let's talk about moon goo so uh i was really hesitant i got asked a lot yesterday uh what do i think is going to happen to moon goo and I'm glad I didn't speak up because the market kind of did the opposite thing than what I was expecting. So in my head, I assume that we are just not consuming tech two on the levels we expect, right? So number one, weak tech two market, 
fine. Number two, uh, I expect the these changes to result in more product coming to market. Now, the way that that product gets to market, I think, is going to be more bursty, so we may see more volatility. But the the overall number of units looks like it has to go up, given the way that we're reducing reducing complexity and increasing activity. Like, I just don't. I, I have a hard time believing that we will see less units of disprosium, for instance, coming out of these things. Um, so with that, with that expectation that supplies will rise and labor costs will rise and demand will stay flat, like, should we really expect prices to go up? Now, if I had said this yesterday, I would have looked like a big stinking idiot because, well, the market disagrees with me and had bought up, like, every freaking product from Disprosium, uh, big buyout right at the dev blog, not quite uh, dumping the price, um, all the way down into Platinum, which is, which is still climbing. So um, what I expected to see was that... So... My tinfoil, my, my tinfoil in the sky, is that there is still a lot of R32s and R64s out there in the world, in, in stockpiles, out in Null, in Jita, those kind of things. Um, I expect that there is a significant amount of back supply just sitting in coffers, waiting. Uh, that had been generated since uh, since Odyssey. It's years old at this point, and it's just sitting in a sitting in a hangar, keeping a net net worth value up. And that means that uh, if the price spikes, I expect a lot of this to flood back into the market. So I wouldn't want to invest personally in Disprosium, in uh, Neodymium, in um, Thulium? I want to say Thulium is one of them. Um, I'm sure someone will correct me. The But these, these high-end materials, I expect that as the price rises, that these that these stocks will start to come to, to come out of out of hiding, and we will see volumes really outpace the speculative demand. Um, so we're gonna dump the price. And I expect that to be a double whammy once we hit the patch because, again, I, I don't know why to expect anything less. I expect more of this material coming out. Again, without without looking at CC, without playing with the mechanics, there's no way to know that. And not enough information has been released. This is purely speculation. But I think this dumps the price. And th there's nothing inherently evil about that. But it means that I would not be speculating in these markets. So... The caveat is that I don't think that the that the R16 market is as well as well served. So down at the bottom you have R4s, which like every moon has, they're things like evaporite deposits and atmospheric gases and hydrocarbons. Next thing up are the regional metals. You got your titaniums and your and your uh, whatever the rest of them are. There's, there's, there's a whole bunch of really common metals that are barely worth mining. And then R16s are where the money starts to, starts to make some sense. And like platinum spiked a couple weeks ago. And I sort of wrote this off because I don't really track the R16s. And now with the changes, well, I don't expect as much, I don't expect as much oversupply in, in coffers in R16s, I don't, they just don't hold the same amount of value given the, given the stuff. And I don't, I don't, so I don't expect as much back, back stock to be, to be in the market. And I expect whoever's sitting on them to, like, I expect them to not be at 100% efficiency. Like I expect some of these to just not be producing or, you know, a, a stick has gone dead and, and it's just not being used. Like I expect this to be a much more interesting market. So if you want to speculate, <clears throat> and you're probably too late to play, but I would be looking at the R16s personally. I think this is going to be the more interesting spot, even if supplies rise. I think that most people are looking are, are looking up at the highest end of the market and skipping the middle and the bottom 
and this would be a decent chance to to take some positions without putting on uh, putting down a ton of money. Um, unfortunately, like you should have done this yesterday. Uh, in all in all honesty, so um, my my TLDR for speculating in the on the new products is um, don't buy R R thirty twos and R sixty fours. Do buy isotopes uh, targeting an eight hundred uh, a price of eight hundred. Don't buy fuel blocks because I expect them to drop, and do look at the the R sixteen products of things like platinum and vanadium and ooh yeah I should have had a list on the thing but go look at the R the R sixteens. Uh, also, <clears throat> another speculative target I have been saying for the last few weeks. If you wanted to speculate ahead of FanFest, PI4 was a good place to do it. We saw some good opportunities here in nanofactories, recursive computing modules, sterile conduits for the last few weeks. And now that we actually see some news on uh, what the new structures are going to do and we start seeing the hype, what would you what would you look at that? I mean, nanofactories, they're up, uh, what, 40%. You could have bought in at 1100 and got out at 1300 What's that? Oh my god. Like, I think it's a little too late to jump in now. Um, you might be able to watch for a spot right ahead of FanFest streams. Uh, would be the next place I'd be looking for a buy. Um, it's risky. I, I think a lot of the action is going to be over before it really starts. Uh, once we see the release, I don't expect too much shortage, but I am hoping in the longer term more of these die so that uh, we see more churn in the PI4 markets, uh, adding to some more uh, industry volatility. So that's my hope there. <clears throat> Next, uh, by popular demand, uh, thanks to Probag Bear and let me not forget the other guy's name. And Tyco, uh, Melted Nano Ribbons. We saw a lot of action on them uh, a couple weeks back when the that there will be a T3 rebalance was was leaked and uh, prices went a little bit nuts and have since recovered. Um, there have been reports of stockpiling and people uh, hoarding and not very happy about the price of things. But, well, this is what you do when you speculate on things with only <laughs> with the only news being that we are looking at it. Um, also not pictured here is, uh, the Loki taking it on the mouth. Um, there is, there is, uh, that has been dropping in price like a stone. So, um, sorry about that T3 producers and wormhole guys. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, if you're, if you're, uh, speculator i'd be looking for maybe buying in some of these cheap melted nano ribbons uh maybe go out to amar and uh put some put some opportunistic buy orders together uh, if you wanted to jump in the market but again i think it's going to be a 50 50 shot on whether you get to look like a turbo genius because t3s will be amazing again or uh eating your lunch because uh t3s are just basically getting a tiny tiny little turn and uh, at the uh, at the rebalancing wheel. Uh, next <clears throat> next ship on the rotation is Vexor Navy issues. We've been watching these uh, pretty closely the last few weeks. Um, going into the weekend, supplies are pretty short, uh, so this would be a decent chance if you were holding on to them to get sold. Uh, I'd be targeting just over a hundred million. Uh, I wouldn't go much above a hundred million and I'd, I'd take 98, uh, given the way things are. Um, but we're in a particularly weak spot and there should like, okay, you could probably get 110 if you're, uh, if you're lucky, but like if you're bought in on Vexor Navy issues, if you are using it as a conversion currency, uh, from your, for, from your loyalty points, uh, I'd be looking for this weekend to be jumping on the jumping on that bandwagon because I think it's going to be the best price you're going to see for the next few weeks. Uh, another weird one uh, in my feed this week is the Hecate uh, taking a big big jump up. I don't know who is using Hecates. I have not seen any particular meta around Hecates. Like. I am I am so confused with this. Uh, it looks a little bit more like the supply just dropped off, given the given the volume here. Uh, I didn't get a chance to zoom in on it, but 
like this is this is strange as heck like doubling in price over the last three or four days like i please somebody i am me or or something dm me with with uh information on why the heck this is happening because i have no idea this is this has been surprising me and i don't know what to tell to say about it um and then last on our list is the poor poor fetos uh tracking down looks like uh they there are no there's no happiness for these poor puppers um so this is a great chance to go get a, fe- a fido on the cheap give that pupper a loving home in your in your cargo hold a friend for life is a fedo and uh i i encourage you to adopt today given that it's the best time to buy up fedos they're great uh, prediction review. I didn't see anything in the in the usual review list that uh, I thought was interesting this week. Um, again, we've gone over most of the spots. The the place I have to eat the most crow on is the Plex price because it keeps rising, and I keep saying, uh, "How can this be?" So uh, let me let me take my licks on that one. Um, next, the violence report. Just give a quick rundown of uh, activity across the cluster. Um, active ships, usual mix that we, that we expect to see, uh, Thanatos back on the list is a little bit interesting. Um, otherwise volumes look right. Uh, Stratios and Astero have been a little bit interesting in, in the background stats, but nothing really to write home about. Uh, active systems, uh, Amamake still on the top of the charts. Uh, Gita's still still hot. Uh, VTAC three is the new one on on my list, and I don't remember seeing anything about VTAC three. So please, again, in the comment section, please tell me who is fighting in VTAC three. I would love to know about it. Uh, and then blank because I screwed up and I had a bug and couldn't fix it. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the show. I want to thank everyone who was tuned in live. We had a great tune out turn out i want to thank uh eve news 24 for hosting us so generously once again so thank you um the uh great to see everyone live if you want to tune in live all you got to remember is eve prosper that'll get you to twitch twitter youtube and our blog we are live on fridays at 0300 eve time that is thursday night us eight o'clock pacific um if you want to get in touch with me very best way to do so is through our Discord. Links should be down in the doobly-doo below. Uh, before we leave, do remember, if you do enjoy what we do, if you get value from this show, uh, do consider supporting us on Patreon. Our patrons keep this show on the air, keep it free of charge, keep it open-sourced, uh, make it possible for this to be here week after week. And so I have to thank our patrons. Uh, even a dollar goes an extremely long way for this show. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, if you want to give me... <laughs> yeah. Uh, it keeps our servers paid. It keeps... Uh, adds off the stuff it makes it so i don't have to worry about it and it keeps me coming back week after week so thank you every one of you patrons thank you so much if you can't support us directly i completely understand it is just a spaceship game after all do consider sharing us among your friends among your corp among your enemies spam us in local uh get followed on all the platforms because like every good economist i like seeing numbers going up and to the right uh, so get subscribed on all the platforms and do come talk with us. Uh, with that, I'm going to end the show here. I have been your host, Lock Fox. This has been your Eve Prosper show, and I will be back next week with more market news.